welcome to another episode of D&D's Nozer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for this evening, and we have joining us Julian Kanko, who is our new producer, and uh, we'll be chatting with you guys on the chat. So uh, we are live on Facebook, we are live on both Twitches, and thank you for the follow. If you follow us on the Realmsmith Twitch, uh, you will light up this little potion bottle here, so you can head over and check that out as well. We'll go through some really, really quick announcements first before we dive into tonight's mini. On the schedule, it was the... A red dragon wormling we're not going to do that tonight uh, i had mentioned that last week just because we're doing the young red dragon in march and i don't want duplicate kind of color schemes because you can use literally the, the color scheme we're using for the red dragon for the wormling um so instead what we're doing is we are doing the brand new silver dragon from whiz kids which will be uh released mid-march um and you guys will all have your hands on and i wanted to do one of the new the new young dragons so we're going to do that. Quick announcements. want to thank our main title sponsors, of course, Dungeons & Dragons, for having us on their uh, channel. To uh, Vallejo, uh, of course, for all the awesome paints and being a paid sponsor, as well as WizKids for providing us these amazing miniatures that we can paint from week to week. Uh, if you're interested in adventure boxes, we have monthly adventure boxes. It's an ongoing campaign that you can subscribe at realmsmith.tv. Uh, you can cancel it any time, try one box if you want, and then if you want $20 off your first box, you can put I Want Adventure into the checkout and you will receive $20 off that first box. You will you get everything that you need for uh, that adventure, including a uh, scented candle for setting the mood. You get a sound set, uh, si Sirenscape sound set, which is specific to uh, that encounter, as well as all the miniatures and terrain and a module and maps and special character items and all that kind of stuff. So really fun, immersive experience. Check that out. Uh, Gary Con, we will be at Gary Con end of March. That is March 26th to 29th. Uh, we will be doing a number of things there. The first thing we're going to have is a booth where we'll be doing our, a, um, running our adventure boxes and doing demos of that in our booth. So you can check us out at the booth in the exhibit hall space. Um, Julian will be running some as well as, thank you for the follow, <laughs> Julian will be running some, as well as uh, Brandon, and I think David is also going to run some. So you'll meet the Realm Smith crew and cast uh, at Gary Con. Make sure you stop by and say hi. We'll also be doing the finale of Into the Mist, and we're doing a really cool interactive finale where people at home are going to be able to actually affect the combat in-game. I think it's the first time it's ever been done. We're super excited about it. Um, and so you can join us for that live over the internet. You can't join us live at GaryCon if you're going there, but you can watch on your devices while we're recording live. But we would love everybody to join us for that, and it's going to be epic. Um, we have Nora Ibrahim joining us in a role there, which is going to be a lot of fun, as well as some other celebrities that we will be, uh, we're so freaking excited, uh, but we can't talk about yet. So we will, will in short order in the next number of weeks. Um, finally, we are doing Nolzers live at Gary Con. So we're doing this show live on the show floor in one of the rooms. Make sure that you come and, uh, or sorry, that you go to tabletop events where you buy tickets, event tickets for Gary Con. It's twenty dollars, and we are going to paint the young red dragon, um, which is going to be freaking awesome. Uh, and that is going to be a brand new uh, mini that will be released in March. So you will be one of the first to actually have and get your hands on that miniature and paint it live with us as we teach you how with a celebrity guest, which we're going to announce soon, as long uh, along with uh, a representative from WizKids. Uh, who could tell us all about the miniature and how that came to be and all that fun stuff. I think those are all the announcements. Make sure that you follow us. All the VODs of all of our episodes are, are on YouTube, both the Rumpsmith YouTube and the uh, D&D YouTube, all 34 episodes so far. Um, and yeah, subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Twitch, both the D&D Twitch and our Twitch. And of course, we love subscriptions both on the D&D Twitch and the Rumpsmith Twitch as well. I think that's all the announcements. I think we can jump right in here. Let's do that. Do you want to grab the, oh, the turn off the? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we have the a young silver dragon miniature from Whiskids. It's a large miniature, wonderful plastic miniature, highly detailed, and will be out in March. So this is kind of an advanced look at that. Uh, we also have the Vallejo brushes for miniatures, um, which include a zero, a one, and a two. We have a Vallejo dry brush, uh, which is a number four, actually. Some water in a water pot, uh, some paper towel, and a paint palette 
for mixing paints and all of that fun stuff. Then on to our paint list uh, for Vallejo paints. We have Chainmail Silver and Silver for the Dragon's base kind of scales uh, and skin tone. We have a blue wash, which we're actually going to mix with a verdigris color uh, in order to give kind of this really cool bluish tone that is in the uh, monster art in the monster manual. I uh, just got to give it a bit something different just so it doesn't just look metallic, but it's got a really cool kind of magical uh, silver tone to it. Electric blue and glacier blue for its eyes and the inside of its mouth. A black wash for adding some uh, darker shadows and some of the um, deeper recesses. Heavy brown for the base and polished gold for the belly. We're going to use a sepia wash on top of that and then also some silver to dry brush on top of that as well. Um, and then rosy flesh for the inside of the wings for that. All right, let's go. Um, we also have Sirenscape playing in the background. Some nice, peaceful music. Uh, Silver Dragons are, of course, fun and fun loving and love adventurers and love to help and love nature and all of that wonderful stuff. So we just got that for some ambiance. Once again, we are live on, the, on all of the chats. Uh, so definitely ask your questions, uh, and Julian will field those, and I can focus on painting. So to start, we are going to start with Chainmail Silver, and that is going to be basically an all-over base coat of this. We are going to use a larger brush in order to uh, apply that uh, across the mini. There we go. And I'm going to dilute it just a touch, just so that it... Um, just so that it flows really well. Uh, there's a lot of recesses, especially in behind here where the wings kind of meet the back. It's gonna be really tight. So we're just gonna go around and cover the entirety of the miniature with chainmail silver. All right. How you doing, bud? I'm doing just great. How are you? Great, especially because today in where we live, which is just west of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, it was like seven degrees outside. I don't know if it got hotter than that, but it I spent was, an hour uh, out with no coat yeah, on the I think, balcony. I think my car uh, cracked it at uh, nine degrees when nine? I was, when I was oh, on the way. So man. It, was, uh, it was lovely. It was so nice. It's supposed to be warm again tomorrow. I am already done with winter. Well, I was done with winter when it started, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a winter guy. I don't, I don't like the cold. I think it's my like Mediterranean blood. Long overdue, for sure. Yes, yes, I need it. I need it. I need is, sun in my life. That's a cool stance on the dragon, too. Right? Very cool. Very silver dragon esque. Yeah. Very kind of regal, but. And so it's like I see in the in the picture here. It's actually like standing on a rock. Is there it's something that came with the mini? Yeah. So the base has yeah, the base has kind of come a rocky yeah. rocky base, which we're going to use the the heavy brown to sort of yeah, finish cool that stance. off with. <sighs> But yeah, I know. It's nice just to have a weekend where it's actually sunny and right? not cloudy and yeah. snowy and cold. Yeah. For the people who don't know what it's like to live in a cold climate. Yeah, totally. Totally. All right. What's popping back in the Facebook? What's that? Facebook uh, chat out here on me. Oh, did it? Yeah, Facebook doesn't uh, update its comments very often, so you have to kind of refresh it every once in a while. For sure. Facebook doesn't there we go. Uh, update its comments very often, so you have to kind of refresh it every once in a while. Hit the audio yeah. one again. Joel just sent me a text saying, What's on your head? It's my toque. I got some slouchy toques. <laughs> Does Joel not like my toque? Is it not? I thought it was toque. okay. I don't know. Fine. Be that way, Joel. He's like, what's on your head? <laughs> I should be like, what? Well, what is on my head? I didn't want to do my hair today. It's Sunday. Every once in a while, you know, you just want to not do your hair and paint. I don't have that problem any day. <laughs> yeah. My hair is starting to thin. So my dad had a full head of hair till he was in his in his fifties. 
kind of close to 60s. So, and my grandfather still has like a full mullet head of hair. So I was hopeful, but no, it's starting to thin and I'm a little concerned, but it's okay. I, I'll embrace it. I will embrace it. Once it goes, when it just, comes, just let it all go. Just let it go. I know. Yeah. Oftentimes people don't let it go yeah. soon enough. Oh, there's a question in here actually from uh, Rigger underscore Raven. Yeah. Uh, do the dried colors on your palette not mix into the new paint you put down? It doesn't, actually. Once they're dry and if they've been dry for a day or so, which these have, I was painting um, something else last night, actually, that I can't talk about. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and maybe from the colors you might be able to kind of <laughs> discern what what it is I was painting. But, um, but yeah, I um, no, they don't, actually. Never had that problem. What I do have sometimes is if it, it'll flake off because it's dry. So if I'm kind of like really digging into the bottom of a color, uh, but they don't. Um, yeah, I don't have great, great um, palette etiquette. I guess I always have a, a messy, dirty palette. But the amount that I paint, it's just really time-consuming to <laughs> to kind of keep up with cleaning it and having it clean and keeping it clean and all that stuff. And there's another comment here asking that no primer, uh, but these are pre-primed, are they not? Yes, so all the WizKids yeah. minis come pre-primed, um, and they are ready to go. I literally, you know, five minutes before we went on air here, cracked it out of the blister pack, and it was ready to go. So all the WizKids mini come pre-primed, which is really, really great. Um, it just means that you can get to painting miniatures a lot faster. You don't have to worry about buying primer. You don't have to worry about going outside, and although tonight, today would have been a great day for priming minis. Um, you don't have to worry about going outside and priming it with a rattle can or, or with your airbrush or something like that. So, really helpful. Time saving features. Absolutely. No need to wash down? No. No, because the primer itself covers all the plastic area that you'd have to kind of wash typically. Uh, there's no release agent on it or anything like that because it's been pre primed. So, I've never had an issue with. Sometimes I've noticed that the paint sometimes doesn't adhere totally, so it does rub off a little bit on the corners while you're handling it. Um, just because it has been in the package and it's not fresh, fresh primer. Um, but for the most part, I, I haven't had haven't had any issues. And another question he here. He's almost silver. The, uh, he's almost silver. Just about silver. He's almost all silver. Uh, question from Glenix or Glenix. Uh, yep. Are you using a wet palette? If so, does it still work with all that paint layered on? I am not using a wet palette. Uh, if I did use a wet palette, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do uh, the layered paint like this. Um, <laughs> But but I, I and the reason I don't use a wet palette is because um, I don't do a lot of kind of wet blending and the Vallejo paints I find stay wet in the palette long enough for me to finish the, the, the paint that I that I need to paint. So I'm I'm never really too concerned about keeping my paint wet long term. Um, for those if, if I were painting something for a um, for a competition or or something like that that took or maybe painting something over a couple days that I wanted to maintain the colors long term, then then fine. But I, I basically take the time that I take on these shows to paint miniatures for the most part, which is you know a couple hours, two to three hours. And in that case, I don't really need the paint to stay as wet uh, as long, really. Um, and I'm not doing a lot of wet blending either, so I don't necessarily need need all that. Finishing the dragon toes, and then I am done. And then we got uh, one other question coming in. Yeah. Uh, do you often have to remove mold lines on the miniatures? No, so I don't do that either. Uh, some people do. Uh, again, if it's a miniature that, that means a lot or is kind of, you know, um, a, a showpiece item or centerpiece item or even a, a, a player character item, maybe I will. But the, the mold lines on the... On the uh, on the WizKit stuff aren't so bad. Um, they don't really interfere too much. And and I've said many times before with when it comes to, to WizKids minis um, or D&D minis rather, you know, they're going to be on your table maybe once or twice a year if that. Uh, and so, you know, I, I don't want to take the time that it would take to really kind of remove all the mold lines and then even reprime those areas uh, just because I think the value of that isn't necessarily, um, you don't get the value back for the time that it's spent on the table. So... And that is a silver dragon right there. 
Tim, our director of operations and production genius, also just came in. Hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. How's it going? So peaceful, the music in the background, the sirenscape, it's so nice. A little change up from last week with the bard and the and the tavern. Yes, a little 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 change, yeah. 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 From the camp. I guess it was a Vistani camp, wasn't it? Kind of a bard or I don't remember camp exactly which, yeah. which sirenscape one yeah, you were using. It was, it was uh, a, I think it was the wagon journey. And we used the uh, there's a camping mood that we used. While we were painting draft horses for the Vistani wagons we painted. All right, which we featured in last week's episode of Into the Mist. And then we ended on a crazy um, cliffhanger where, and they're still here, <laughs> <laughs> those cards, so that you guys know, a little look behind the curtain, those cards are still here. The cards that I, <laughs> that I um, dealt last week have not been touched. They are still there to be revealed in tomorrow's episode of Into the Mist. I'm very excited. It's going to be fun. It was one hell of a cliffhanger. Yeah, it was good. It was like everybody couldn't wait till we got to, to Madame Eva, and then we finally did. And Sorry, not sorry. It's fun. I love cliffhangers. Just keeps the players excited. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks large for younger. Is it the same size ish as the blue dragon? Yes, yes. So these are all the same, uh, more or less the same size. I'll bring out the red dragon. This is the young red dragon, and you can see the size uh, is about is about right. So all of these are young dragon size. Uh, there is a little disclaimer um, about the bases. So this this is the base, and then the black base that comes uh, under it for stability purposes isn't the size that they are. I think they're large creatures. I'm pretty sure they're large. I think a young dragon is large. Young red dragon. Let's find out. You know what? We haven't done this in a long time, actually. Um, we haven't actually read. Sometimes when we're waiting for things, for things to dry, Julian, we uh, have story time. Ooh, story, story time. time. And we kind of go through... Um, kind of go through stuff um, and learn about the creatures that we're... That we are uh, painting, and so silver is after copper, is after gold. There it is. <laughs> Same image. Um, they are awesome. So a young silver dragon is a large dragon. So yeah, it's a large, large size. So it should be on a more or less a large base, um, which is smaller than the base it's on here. But I think they did this because it's so tall they don't want it toppling over. Um, Challenge nine. Its breath weapon is cold breath, and it also has a paralyzing breath as well, which is really super cool. I love silver dragons um, in general. I love their their kind of demeanor. Um, the friendly, friendliest and most social of the metallic dragons. Silver dragons cheerfully assist good cr creatures in need. A silver dragon shimmers as if sculpted from pure metal. Its face given a noble cast by its high eyes and sweeping beard like chin spikes. Beard like chin spikes. <laughs> a, a spiny frill rises uh, high over its head, tracing down its neck to the tip of its tail. A silver wormling scales are blue gray with silver highlights. As the dragon approaches adulthood, its color gradually brightens until its individual scales are barely visible. As a silver dragon grows older, its pupils fade until its eyes resemble orbs of mercury. Love it. Silver dragons believe that living a moral life involves doing good deeds and ensuring that one's actions cause no undeserved harm to other sentient beings. They don't take it upon themselves to root out evil as gold dragons do, or gold and bronze dragons do, but they will gladly oppose creatures that dare to commit evil acts of harm to the innocent. It's awesome. Metallic dragons are the best dragons. Friends of the small races. Silver dragons enjoy the company of other silver dragons. Their only true friendships outside their own kin arise in the company of humanoids. Love it. Yeah, they're great. We can read some more of that when we put washes on this. But as you can see, the colors kind of on its on its belly, I found in the artwork, are, are kind of gold. They're actually not matte colored. I was going to do like a kind of a um, 
a sepia toned kind of bone white color, but it's not, it, it isn't that. Uh, in fact, it's actually quite kind of metallic. So I'm actually going to use a, a polished gold on the, on the, on the belly here to, to get the effect that we're looking for. Um, but it's still quite wet on the back here. So we want to give it a bit more time. We do not want to put a wash on a wet, on a wet, uh, base coat. That is not, it will mix and just become a big jumbled mess. I wonder if maybe that's the way it's kind of shown there because it's the, I think that's the ancient black dragon, or the ancient silver dragon. This is right? the ancient silver, yeah. This is the, yeah. this will be the young, yeah. So I wonder if maybe the, the silver fades over time as it ages. Yeah, maybe. Well, that's, a, that's actually a good point. I should, probably should have taken a bit of a, a, excuse the sound of the, of the fan. This used to be a quiet fan. Um... But, uh, yeah, I could have maybe made it a bit more gray, some of the scales, and, and kind of dulled it down a little bit just because it's a young one. It won't quite have the same luster, I guess. Even the, even the chest, too. Maybe the chest, maybe I should have done kind of a brown to bone white to sepia kind of kind of chest on this one, given that same reason. Interesting. Well, I've only got the one picture. I do like the, that they give kind of direction on the color of the, that the dragons should be as, as they kind of age on a lot of the dragons. It's really super cool. Okay. Uh, uh, Lunchbox had a question. So, yeah. uh, do you feel that these young dragons are too large a scale to be considered a young scale? Um, I think dragons should be huge. So even when they, when we've had lar uh, gargantuan dragons, um, or like ancient or adult, I don't think they've ever been big enough in miniature form yet in the line. No. Um, like in like the pre-painted line. Dragon should be massive. It should be massive. It should be, in my opinion, gargantuan, right? Um, so if you look at any other large creature, if you take its wings away, it's not much bigger than any large creature in the game, if you think about it. Um... An example of that, well, here's the gold dragon. I'll give you guys a little look at this, too. Uh, that's the young gold dragon, which is hu Actually, it's much bigger <laughs> than the silver dragon, but I guess gold dragon is supposed to be quite a bit bigger anyways. Um, but a shambling mound is large, isn't it? I do believe a shambling mound is a large creature, yes. So I have a, a shambling mound to put right beside it. Um, I wouldn't say that it's much... It doesn't take up much more size. Yeah, it's just longer, right? Yeah. Whereas yeah, the, it's just the stronger. It's more hulky. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, given given that kind of size comparison, I would say that I don't think they're actually that much bigger. Um, I have a uh, let's put it beside a town guard here. I mean, that's that's pretty cool for a for a young dragon. I think dragons should be epic in nature. I like that size personally. So no, I don't think so. I think that they're perfect. All right, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to miss Nick. Now, in the palette of, or, or the paint um, image at, at, at the beginning of the video, I put verdigris as the color in the game color line. I'm actually going to use the game effect instead. This is a bit more milky, a bit more um, diluted so that it kind of runs into the recesses. So it's more of a wash than this is. So I'm actually, and this is totally an experiment, I've never done this before, but you can see in the kind of, in the color reference here, there's a lot of that kind of verdigris sort of, almost like a turquoisey color um, that exists. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that with some blue, blue wash and see how, how this goes on. I don't know how much I'm gonna mix. We're gonna kind of take it a step at a time here and just see what happens. I've never mixed these two paints together, so I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to use mostly blue wash. I'm going to water it down quite a bit. Oh, I like that. Water it down quite a bit, and we're going to see how this goes. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. All right. Okay, hey, let's see. Interesting. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's a lighter blue color, which I think is okay. I'm going to mix in some more blue wash in there because I think it's probably a little too light. Just to darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna 
Actually, yeah, I got a question here from yeah. Lego My Ego sixteen seventy eight. <laughs> Lego, good to see you, bud. Do you know when these are supposed to arrive at our friendly local game store? Yes, mid March. So this, along with the the Red Dragon and the Gold Dragon and all of uh, Wave Eleven, will be in game stores uh, mid March. Along with the Baylor and the other things that we've we've shown recently. So now this wash is going to take some time to dry. I do want it to be fairly thick on here. Not thick, but but I do want it to. It'll really bring out the color and the or the detail, I should say, in the scales and such. So like that. I like it. I like the tone of it. Again, with washes, for those of you that are new to painting potentially, um, what you want to do is you're not really painting the wash on. You're putting it on the surface, and then you're moving it into the recesses so that it rests in the recesses. You don't want it to pull too much because it will um, clog the, the detail if, if it's too strong or too heavy. Uh, but, for example, right there, now you're seeing all that awesome detail in that miniature. And there's no shortage of detail in the WizKids minis, that's for sure. Even just the detail work in the wings, right? It's yeah. Just yeah, it's so crazy. good. It's so good. So, so good. It's a little darker on that side, so I'm going to move some more of that verdigree in there. And for, for the first time in a long time, I'm only, thank you for the follow, uh, for the first time in a long time, longest time, I am doing one miniature instead of yeah, it has been quite a multiples weeks. yet. It has yeah. been a while since I've done one one mini. It's a large mini, but this one will get done no problem in the two hours. Uh, the metallic dragons tend to go a lot faster, especially because they're, uh, the wings tend to be one tone. We're not separating the spines uh, in between the wings, the veins. So it tends to go quicker, much quicker than that. We did a, little, a fun little thing last week. We asked uh, everybody in the in the chats to kind of sound off where they're watching from. Yeah. See uh, where we're getting some viewers from. So if you guys wouldn't mind uh, just sounding off, just, you know, where are you tuning in from? We had some people from Brazil, from Australia, from Europe yeah. last week. It was pretty cool. See how many people are tuning in all across the world. We um, we also um, uh, we had, last week we had a, a raid. We on did Twitch, have that raid right? that came in. Yeah. Uh, so I guess cool. what that is is people kind of have a channel and then they're done their their live stream or whatever and they're like, hey, we're gonna go raid these folks and kind of join their stream, which is which is a super cool thing. I didn't even know existed. <laughs> all the nuances of the beast that is Twitch. Yes. Yes, which we're kind of starting to to understand and get a grasp of. DC Lasser has sounded off in the chat. Is a little disappointed that you're not doing five dragons in the two hours. <laughs> if I was going to do the red dragon wormling, <laughs> I was going to do four of them because uh, maybe a, a campaign that we're running maybe calls for multiples. Um, but... Um, Spoiler warning, but uh, but yeah, no, we decided instead to. Uh, I decided instead to do this. Thank you for the follow. Yes, another follow. All right, hey, you guys, quick up the sound off. We've got lots of people from the states. Cool, lots all over the states. Chicago, Texas. Welcome, welcome, Chatsworth. welcome. Chatsworth. I think the abbreviation GA is for Georgia. Yep. Yep. I'm not up on my yeah, U.S. state be. abbreviations. Yep. Kentucky, Maryland, Denmark. That's a new one. Nice. That is, a, that is a demo demo last time. Yeah, That's pretty cool. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, you have my sympathy. How cold is it over there right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Much colder than here, I'm sure. I'm sure. Alberta, for the most part, gets pretty nasty cold-wise. Unless you like the cold, and then it's great. Uh, Kayla Jane 157 we are currently painting the Young Silver Dragon from the WizKids line of minis. Yes, which will be released uh, mid-March mid is when this dragon, along with a bunch of new young dragons that we haven't seen yet in the line that everybody's really been anticipating and asking about, including the Young Red Dragon, Young Gold Dragon, um, and the Silver one, which we are doing today. 
Okay, so this is, again, a blue wash mixed with some verdigris uh, effect paint. Uh, and I think that turned out nicely. I think I got this cool kind of lighter blue. It kind of fits sort of what's going on over there. I may actually take some verdigris, even though he wouldn't have verdigris, I guess, with silver necessarily. It doesn't tarnish the same way as bronze and copper wood or so on and, and all of that kind of stuff, but... Uh, or brass, uh, but I might still do it because it's some really cool effects in the in the art that I'd like to to kind of get there. So I think we're gonna go back to story time because story time. because this is gonna take some time to dry here. Actually, I can go ahead and I can base coat the base first. So we're gonna use heavy brown for the base. Base is gonna be really simple today. Uh, one color with a wash and then a dry brush of the same color. Uh, mostly because um, we wanted to keep, again, the paint count down so you guys know kind of what the minimum amount of paints that you need in order to kind of complete something is. Um, as some of you are kind of buying colors as you need them for the tutorials. Um, and also just want to take a, a sec to kind of thank everyone for your incredible support over the last two or three months since uh, we started... Uh, Nolzers natively on the D&D Twitch and also our Into the Mist campaign. I, I can't tell you how much our uh, YouTube and our Twitch audience has grown um, in leaps and bounds. So we just want to thank everyone for watching and, and tuning in every week and asking questions and being active in the chat on, on, on both of our streams. It's just been such an awesome adventure. Um, and we have so much more incredible, crazy things happening in the next number of weeks and months, so. And it really is cool just seeing how much more active the chats are becoming. Yeah. As, as the episode's been going on and on. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've been doing live streams for quite some time, years, um, but obviously going native on the D and Twitch has, has, you know, really skyrocketed uh, the viewership. And so it's just really cool to know that you're playing to people. And I mean, we always have viewers, but not to this, not to this magnitude. Um, of course, uh, just makes sense. But and there we go. I used a heavy brown, which is an extra opaque paint, which is intended to go on in one coat, uh, and it did that did that very well. That's what I used there in this bottle. You can see it's close to its end. I'm squeezing the life out of it, <laughs> so it's the the uh, label is starting to go a little bit here. Um, you know what? This is starting to pool. So now picking up my silver dragon, I'm noticing that the the wash is starting to pool in some areas that I don't necessarily want it to too much and so I'm just going to go through here and move that wash around a little bit. I'm also noticing some areas I didn't pool in um, and so I'm just going to go around and touch up some of those areas, sop up some of that wash so that we're not getting major poolage. would like to know, have you done the young red dragon yet? No. Well, I have painted a young red dragon. It is here. I'll, I'll show you guys it again. For those of you that are just tuning in, that is my painted version of the young red dragon. Um, this was actually a prototype that I painted a while ago for another purpose uh, for WizKids. But um, at GaryCon on March 29th, which is my birthday, uh, I will be painting this at Gary Con live with an audience, and then we're going to stream that show, the pre-recorded show, that night on that Sunday. So you will get the Red Dragon tutorial um, with a special guest um, and WizKids personnel um, from Gary Con on Sunday, the March 29th, which will be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to get out my fan again. And we're going to do some story time. See if I can do story time while I fan. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Multitasking. Oh, gosh. Like a boss. We'll see. Look at that. Works. Oh, Modrons. That's not what we want. We do not want Modrons. We want dragons. Have, have you ever used Modrons? I, I was campaign? about to say, I've never used Modrons. I've never see, even seen them used in a campaign. We have anyway. minis. We have Modron minis. Pre oh, I think we have unpainted Modrons now. Maybe I'll do some Modrons sometime. They're kind of cool. Nobody can see the fan, so everybody at home is like, what is going what on, is on over there? Uh, okay, Silver Dragon. What else do we want to learn? What do you want to learn about? 
Um, what do we want to learn about? I may just let this air dry because it's a little loud. It's okay. We can just chat. I have heard more obnoxious noise. noises. True. Uh, respect of human for humanity. Silver dragons befriend humanoids of all races, but shorter-lived races such as humans spark their curiosity in a way the longer-lived elves and dwarves don't. Humans have a drive and zest for life that silver dragons find fascinating. Hoarding history. Silver dragons love to possess relics of humanoid history. This includes the great piles of coins they covet, minted by current and fallen humanoid, em humanoid empires, as well as art objects and fine jewelry crafted by numerous races. Other treasures that make up their hoards can include intact ships, the remains of kings and queens, thrones and crown jewels of ancient empires, inventions and contraptions, and monoliths carried from the ruins of fallen cities. Um, one thing I love uh, in the Monster Manual when it comes to dragons is all the regional effects. Um, and that is an incredible thing that you can use at home in your home game to, um, to just add a lot of narrative to kind of your dragon encounters. Um, an example of that, the region containing a legendary silver dragon's lair is warped by the dragon's magic, which creates one or more of the following effects. Once per day, the dragon can alter the weather in a six mile radius, um, which is super cool. Um, within one mile of the lair, winds buoy non-evil creatures that fall, due, that, that fall due to no act of the dragons or its allies. Such creatures descend at a rate of 60 feet per round and take no falling damage. Uh, given days or, lo or longer to work, Given days or longer to work, the dragon can make clouds and fog within its lair as solid as stone, forming structures and other objects as it wishes. So cool. Literally makes cities out of clouds. Yeah, it's so cool. Love it. And then, of course, it has layer actions that it could use um, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Um, this is the gold... We'll do the gold as well in March. That'll that'll be something that comes in March. Um, geez, an ancient silver dragon is twenty third level, twenty third, uh, twenty three CR. Pretty intense. Very very cool. Armor class eighteen, one hundred sixty eight hit points. On a young silver dragon. All right. Still drying here. So we have a question about torches behind us. I built them. Um, or I didn't build them. Actually, Joel built them. Uh, basically, on Amazon, you can go and you can find flame um, bulbs uh, that kind of uh, emanate or, or um, mimic uh, real flame. So we put that, we kind of wired it all together ourselves and then put them in uh, in just torch stands. Eventually we're going to mount the torches onto the back wall of the facades that we've built uh, to make it look kind of like a bit of a Tudor tavern. Um, and that'll happen hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, but uh, but for now they, they do just fine. Okay, this is drying pretty fast. Once this is completely dry on the belly, I'm going to start to layer that gold that gold color on there. It's the lighter of the golden colors, polished gold. And hopefully that will get the effect that I'm looking for here. But you can see how that came out. It's looking quite blue at, the, at this moment, but once we start to do some dry brushing on it, we'll get that silver back. Okay, so, belly. Um, I am noticing, what you'll notice is when your wash starts to dry, um, that you potentially miss some areas of that wash. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and kind of spot wash those in between the feet here. And there. And I noticed here on the wing as well. When paint dries, it shrinks and it goes matte in a lot of cases. So um, sometimes it, it reveals certain areas that potentially didn't get the, the love that they needed. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to start to paint the belly. For that, I'm gonna use polished gold, which is a game color color. Um, and 
I'm hoping, again, this is another test, but I'm hoping that this will turn out the way that I intended it to. I'm going to dilute it just a touch. Uh, it's not a very thick paint, um, just because it's a lighter color. So we're just going to go ahead and start to... Now, I'm just painting each scale, and then we're going to give it a, a sepia wash. Um, but we're going to go ahead and try not to get it too much into the recesses. If it happens, that's fine. The sepia wash will kind of cover it. But we're giving a slight, almost glaze with this color. It's not going to be solid polished gold. I don't want it to be solid polished gold because then after that, we're going to go ahead and dry brush it with silver afterwards so that we still have the silver kind of coming through on the highlights, but there's an undertone of this kind of golden color, and I think it's going to look really cool. Yeah. So a question is uh, a, a good idea for a silver dragon encounter. What is a good idea? For a silver dragon encounter. Yeah, yeah. So I've had a couple. Um, I think Storm King's Thunder had a silver dragon encounter. Um, pretty sure Horde of the Dragon Queen had a silver dragon encounter too. Uh, the one in, that I ran in Storm King's Thunder that came right out of the book um, were was that they – or was it Horde? No, it was Horde. I think it was Horde, wasn't it? Yeah, because it had the, um, the flying ship, yes. which I built a flying ship. Um, and, uh, and it was kind of just a curious young silver dragon that kind of wanted to kind of trail the, the characters in the ship and find out what was going on and provided some um, protection and some guidance. Um, I think for silver dragons, for me, they're, they're a great way. I've always wanted to, oh, I shouldn't say this out loud because my players might know. If my players are watching, please cover your ears. <laughs> uh, that's always the danger of giving away my, my DM secrets. I've always wanted to have an NPC show up really early in a campaign, like super early, um, like level one and two, and then end up, you know, they, they travel with them, they meet them, they meet them back and forth, it becomes a recurring NPC, and then like 15th level, you find out it was actually a dragon polymorphed. Yep. Right? Like that whole, that's a great way to use a, a, a metallic dragon that is friendly to the party, kind of, you know, have a big reveal moment. Um, that's a cool way to use it. Any thoughts for you, Julian? I know you're a DM. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to run an evil campaign where you would actually fight uh, a metallic dragon. Oh, cool! Just because mm -hmm. you know, it's like you're always fighting the chromatic ones, and it's the typical DD thing to do. But wouldn't it be <laughs> fun to just ru run an evil campaign and actually fight a gold dragon or a silver dragon? Interesting. So that'd be, yeah, that'd yeah, be a fun yeah. a fun route to go. Um, and I guess even if if you don't want to do a whole campaign, you can do a one shot. Sure. Or, or, I mean, there's, there's also ways to make it so that you have to fight a metallic dragon for some reason. And there's no reason why a good party couldn't, if they had to, if they had no other choice. Or, I mean, Jesus, D&D. &D. You can do whatever you need to do. But, but, yeah, it's so fun. And in some cases, even though, you know, the metallic dragons are, are mostly good aligned, like, I think it's the brass dragon. Either the brass or the bronze dragon will, like, bury humanoids in the ground so that they talk to them like they just want to have conversation and so that's not necessarily i <laughs> think a, it's that's a bit of dragon trivia i did not know yeah i think it's we it, can uh, take a look i think it's brown or brass. lego sounding off in the chat saying that it's the brass one yeah the brass yeah so it, the, it's the brass dragons that love conversation so much that if you won't stop kind of have a conversation with it it will actually kind of <laughs> capture you um and and take you as a captive audience that's a to, uh, need to converse Right? So in that case, I mean, you know, players don't necessarily have the time to <laughs> to sit buried uh, and talk to a Shut to up a, about the origins of the universe with me for a moment, if it, you please. Right? And so, you know, that's an opportunity for not necessarily to fight the dragon, but to evade it or get away from it, escape it. Right? Oh, and there's nothing so, wrong with verbal yeah. encounters or skill yeah, challenges, sure. right? Exactly. Exactly. Those are fun. Now, kind of they also have some... Some gold kind of colors on the frills here. I don't know if I want to go that direction, but I'm wondering if I should add some gold kind of highlights to some of the frill area. I think that might be cool. It's, it's an interesting uh, design because it's got right. Like, the, the I might the do gold some coming here. through on the silver. Yeah, I might. Um, I might give a little bit. You know, what? I'm just gonna do this. So what I'm doing, folks, is I'm just doing kind of random brush strokes along the frill in the back. Actually, it looks really cool. Um, and it's just giving it a little touch of color. Um, 
And again, what, what you're going to want to do, what most people want to do, is when they have a, a metallic dragon, like a silver dragon, they're just going to do solid kind of metal color. Um, the difficulty with that is that a perfect example is we've done the copper dragon, we've done the bronze dragon, and we've done the brass dragon. And all of them have, the, the reason they all have kind of different color markings is because they have to differentiate themselves in some way. Uh, they're all kind of gold in color, right? And so it's very, it would be very easy at the table unless you kind of know um, the physiology of these creatures and what separate them, frills and spikes and all that kind of stuff. It really helps to add, for example, the green the green stripes to the brass dragon or you know the verdigris that exists on the copper dragon. So it's all those little details that really kind of separate those dragons from each other. Um, and you know, this is a silver dragon, so you wouldn't necessarily think of putting gold in here. Uh, but once we kind of dry brush it, uh, I think it'll look really, really cool with these kind of little metallic kind of undertones. And a question from uh, easy underscore AK. Uh, looking forward to the Lich and Mummy Lord in wave one. Might they be candidates for a future session? Ooh, that is a great question. Possibly. Definitely possible. Yeah, if you folks have any minis that you want to see painted on the show... Um, that you have on your table and you'd love to paint along with us or, or get some, some hints or some tips, then please sound off. Let us know because we're filling our March schedule um, now. I mean, a, a lot of it's already kind of set because of Gary Khan and because of the dragons that came out, but we have a couple a couple spots. So if you have minis you'd like to see us do, please please let us know. It's looking like a good lich. I'm going to get some fun details on the right. lich. So true. Okay, so... I've done that. I took that chance. I think it paid off. So the belly is done with the kind of polished gold. And it looks a little kind of messy, but that's okay. Because, again, once we start to add the washes and the dry brushes, it'll cover a lot of that up. And then I've added a couple highlights of polished gold to the frill. And then um, I think I'm actually going to take this chance to do a little vertigree. Um, straight, which is crazy, I know. Um, but I really love that kind of turquoise verdigris look that 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 dragon has in the in the subject matter. So we're just going to go through and kind of add some of it here in some of the recesses. Um, and I'm I'm going to be splotchy with it. I'm not going to be super intentional with it. Um, I'm going to use it sparingly here. <laughs> That's right here. What's that? So Achilles Blade 2 says, yes, please paint the largest dragon turtle available. I wish. If they had a right. dragon turtle. That'd be a huge mini. That'd be great. That'd be like Kraken, Kraken tier, right? Can't wait for the, for the, for the uh, Tarrasque when that eventually comes along. Yeah, those are massive. That'd be great, right? Love to paint a Tarrasque mini. How about a swarm of Tarrasques? If WizKids is listening, friends at WizKids, make it happen. Yeah, I'll be painting one of those, probably over five or five sessions. <laughs> it's a huge one. three. I mean, that the, the Kraken was mini. pretty big. We did the Kraken, and uh, and that was a that was a that was a sizable mini. It took two two sessions. So um, this is looking actually quite good. I'm just gonna let the Virgil, like I said, just kind of. Rest in the recesses on some of this. And I think it's adding a little bit of kind of interesting detail to it. Again, I'm being kind of intentional about where I put it. I'm not putting it everywhere. There we go. Ultimate Tunings would like to know how, uh, if, uh, have you ever painted a, the Nolzer's Drider? We haven't yet. So that is one that people have been asking for. We're probably going to do that. People have also been asking for the Fire Giant. I'm just waiting for one to come back in stock. So um, the Fire Giant and the Drider are both on the list of, of to-dos. Uh, so look out for those in the, in the future for sure. Okay. <coughs> I think I've, I'm happy with... Um, yes, I think I'm happy with that. Although I would like to have a little bit of that color on 
the wings as well. But for right now, we're just going to leave it. What I am going to do is I'm going to grab the sepia wash at this point, and we're going to paint the sepia wash or, or apply the sepia wash to the underbelly, and that is going to uh, bring that kind of gold color down a little bit and also um, help it to kind of blend in and add some depth. Again, these washes are great. Sepia is my favorite wash in the line. I use it for a lot of things, including bone, paper, parchment, um, leather colors. It's a really nice, warm kind of wash. You can see what immediately it did to that belly there. Um, immediately gave it some, some depth and some interest here. Very cool. Question from uh, Glenix once again. Uh, will you do any magical swords or objects source lighting on the minis themselves? Might uh, be cool on a fire giant. Yeah, yeah. So I have. Um, what was the last one I did actually in a stream? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember the last one I did on an actual stream. Maybe viewers can tell me. <laughs> uh, they probably have better memories for that kind of stuff than I do. Sorry, I'm also adding some of this uh, CPU wash to some of the gold areas that I added um, on the, the rest of the body as well because what happens, obviously, is that it kind of fills the, the recesses there. So I don't want it to look washed out. I do want to still have some depth. So I'm going to go through basically go over the areas of polished gold that I've already done with some sepia wash. Like that. That is looking really cool. Um, sorry, what was the, the, we had a question. Uh, oh, uh, what I did do is if you go to our uh, Beholder tutorial, which is on our YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash realmsmith, we have a four-part uh, tutorial for Beholder. I wanted to look just like the front of the uh, monster manual where, um, as you can see, it's got kind of a lightning effect hitting it from the behind and then like a torch fire effect hitting it in the front. Uh, we did that uh, so you can get some OSL kind of tips on that from those uh, tutorials if you're looking for some object source lighting. Okay, so we're gonna let that sepia wash dry. I think it really did a lot of cool things to the, to the stomach there uh, and really brought out that color and made it look nice and rich. Um, it just made that gold really darken up as it dried. Oh yeah, it did. No, well, I just added a wash to it. So that was, mm. a, that was the sepia wash I just added. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and dry brush the whole thing. I think that's what I'm gonna do next, actually. I think I'm at that, I'm at that stage. Um, yeah, I'm at that stage. Yeah, okay, so now we're going to take our dry brush and we are going to dry it off a bit more because it's still a little wet. We are going to use silver, and that is straight silver from the game color line. It is the brightest kind of silver color that you can get, and we are going to apply a bunch to our, as is typical with dry brushing, we're going to apply a bunch to our brush and then we're going to wipe most of it off on the uh, paper towel. Again, somewhat counterintuitive, but the idea is that we just want to transfer um, dry residue from the brush onto the surface of the miniature and you can already see immediately the effect that it has on the mini. What it's doing is that dry residue is highlighting all of the highest detail on that miniature. Um, and it also blend all of the kind of golds together and the verdigris that we put on there as well as the wash. And it's just really going to kind of finish up that dragon really nicely. Oh, Z Bashu has joined once again with his raiding party. Oh, welcome again. And thank you for raiding our channel. Last week I was like, what happened? I wasn't even sure what happened so we <laughs> thank you so much guys for for joining us i'd love to know in the chat um the the folks that just joined us for a raid how does that work like how do you guys just decide uh on mass that you guys are going to kind of join us uh how many did he bring this time around he brought 103 Holy he or she brought 103 cow, he or she please let me know how that happens did you guys just kind of hang out and start a watch party I, I, we don't even necessarily know how that happens so please Please sound off in the chat and let us know for the, all of you who just joined us 
for the raid. It's a super cool concept that I wish I knew more about, and I really should yes, have done a little bit of research on yeah, it. Yeah, we need to we need to look into that because that is a very cool, very cool concept. Apparently, all you do is type uh, slash raid into, and then the channel name, and it just does the rest for you. Is that what they just yeah. said? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, send commander. Um, and, and did they have like a stream happening, or that's just their audience? That gets a notification that they're that they're raiding, or is it just people who are watching their channel? So uh, apparently, from uh, the streamer's point of view, um, when they click the raid button, uh, if people don't leave the channel, the page just refreshes and brings everybody into the the raided channel. Oh wow, which is pretty cool. Very cool. We're gonna start doing that. Yeah, we really should for other channels. That's great. And you can see, like I said, now that I've added kind of the silver dry brush to that gold area, now we're getting. Now it's kind of all blending in nicely, um, keeping it, you know, on, in that silver kind of world. Um, we don't want to do too much. We don't want to cl clog all of the detail, but it is working out quite nicely. So for those that have joined us from the raid, uh, we have the Nolzers uh, from WizKids, the, the young silver dragon mini that we're currently painting with Jason Azevedo. Yeah, and Realm yeah. Smith and Julian and me. Hello. Um, out of curiosity, so what uh, what stream was happening, and like what was uh, Zebashu streaming about? Yes, when, yes. Uh, when when he or she moved him over. I'd love love to know. Love to know. It does have a very nice pearlescent sheen, right? That's kind of the, and again, I didn't want to just do a metallic, you know, gray metal uh, dragon. I wanted to have something that was a little different, a little more interesting. Uh, he was uh, just we... playing D and D. That's so cool. That's really cool. So awesome. And did they? Sorry, did they raid our channel? Did they raid the? Uh, they D &D raided channel? the D and D channel. It's awesome. So great. So oh, cool. All right. This did come out a little bit lighter than I wanted it to again. So I may come back in here and I have a black wash on here and I put it on the list of paints just in case we wanted to come back and um, we're almost done and we're an hour <laughs> in. Like I got to slow down a little bit because he's, he's pretty much done. Um, but... Uh, I added black just so that I could use it as a way of adding some delineation um, in here in some of the areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get black wash and brush it in between where the where the uh, wings meet the body here as well, where its I guess arms um, extend and meet its wings. We're just going to do that um, because we've washed it out a little bit now with that dry brush, and we just want to bring in some of that, some of that delineation again. I'm using a black wash to do that. You can see that that is kind of adding. <laughs> that that is very much like ambient occlusion. <laughs> uh, Achilles blade. Um, you know, I would love to have your budget for uh, for minis, my friend, uh, but they would like to see because they're getting them themselves. Uh, the Bahir, the Pit Devil, the Valor, the Blue Slod, the Gargantuan Skeletal Dragon, and the Knight on a Horse. <laughs> okay. Good lord. Let's go through. Let's go through them again, <laughs> one by one. Uh, Tortle kind of... Adventures. Um, so the Bahir. Okay, so Tortle we've done. They can catch that. I don't know what episode it was, but probably in the twenties. I, I did the I did the Tortle. So uh, you guys can check out the Tortle. The Bahir, which. The Bahir, which is coming. We'll be doing the Bahir next month. Yes, yeah, we have it. We have one. We yes. have one here. Yes, yes. we do have one. Uh, the Pit Devil. Yep. The, the Baylor. The Baylor will do, yep. The Blue Slod. Okay. I don't know if I'm saying Slod right. Yeah. I've actually never heard yeah, that I, word I said. Slod, yeah. <laughs> um, the Gargantuan Skeletal Dragon. Okay. And the Knight on Horse. Okay. All right. We will We will get on those. Lego seconds the Bahir suggestion. Okay. But here's are really cool. Yeah, they are really cool. It is on the list, so. And then Lunchbox7979 would like to know, have you tried airbrushing 
the chainmail silver? And do you think a light coat of candy blue enamel would work instead of the wash? Interesting. Um, I haven't tried. I, I mean, I've, I've used my dry brush quite a bit. Uh, I use it mostly for like object source lighting or magical effects or kind of um, shadowing or shading large areas if I have a large uh, dragon. Um, but I find a dry brush is just quicker. I don't have to set up my airbrush. I don't have to clean my airbrush afterwards um, just for this purpose. And you can see, folks, that I'm just taking this wash and I'm painting it to the side of each of these spines. And that's just really going to, again, accentuate the detail uh, a bit more. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's really cool. And then, and then the, the idea of, of, of a candy blue kind of pearlescent kind of color would be really cool. Yeah, and then Achilles, when you when you check out that turtle video, just uh, let us know what you think. Next yeah, time. please do. Leave a leave a comment on the YouTube uh, uh, video. Again, all of our VODs, folks. For those of you that have just joined us, um, you can catch them all on the D and D D and D YouTube and at youtubecom slash realmsmith as well. Uh, and we have all thirty four previous episodes up there for you folks to check out. So, thank you for the follow again. Again, if you follow us on the on the Realmsmith Twitch, you will light up this little potion. If ever, anybody's wondering why it's going crazy, and if you subscribe, it'll uh, it'll blink blue twice as well. So, and then of course you'll be notified every time we go live and all of that fun stuff. But I think that's really helping to this black wash is really helping to add a little bit of. And Amanda, uh, sorry, I did see your question. I just hadn't quite gotten around to it yet, but uh, thank you for asking it in both chats. Uh, have you ever tried to attempt a, uh, a Mother of Pearl effect? I haven't. He has not. But I will now. Huh. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Now, what would... I mean, I've heard Mother of Pearl before, but what is Mother of Pearl exactly? You know, there is not a thing in this world that Google can't answer. Yeah, it's true. Because I've heard it so many times, but I can't actually place the effect in my brain right now. Uh, it's also called Knocker, not Knocker. N-A-C-R-E. Yeah. yeah. by epithelial cells of the mantle tissue of various mollusks. This continues to deposit onto the inner surface of the shell, the iridescent nacreous layer, commonly known as mother of pearl. Yeah, I thought this was kind of a mother of pearl look. Um, maybe not. Okay, I am going to go back, folks. I, I, I'm noticing that this is kind of washed out a little bit. I am going to go back and add a little bit more sepia wash, but it's going to be a uh, much more diluted coat of it. Um, that I'm going to add to his belly because I do want to bring back some of that warmth that existed when I used it the first time. So I'm just going to bring just a little bit back. Um, That's kind of what I'm pulling up here for a mother of pearl effect. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well, so we are actually going to do a little bit of the pink. We're going to add some, um, some rosy flesh, which is kind of a pink color to its wings because it has a little bit of that as well inside the wings. On the on the um, subject matter, you can do it right now, actually. And I sh actually probably should have done that before I did the dry brush. I forgot that I was going to do this, so that reminded me. So here we go, rosy flesh, and we are going to dry brush that inside the wing here um, to again, just like it shows up kind of in the artwork, give it a bit of a pinky sort of look. I did this for the white dragon as well. Um, and that's on our channel as well. But if you just kind of dry brush it onto here, and then we'll go back over with some silver. Um, but it's going to give it a bit of a cool kind of close to the edge, mother of pearl look. Yeah, so I guess it's just the inside of a clamshell. Is yeah. What, uh, what that yeah. is. But uh, I don't know if uh, Tango Kitsune is still here, um, but they wanted to thank you because they painted the werewolves following your tutorial. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you. And their players loved it. Oh, awesome. So, if you're still there. Like on the they... channel they did? Sorry? On, on their channel they painted it or they? Uh, no, I think they, 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 I mean, they just painted it for their own players. And, oh, cool. Uh, and oh, it. cool. Yeah. Like their home game. Yeah. Their yeah. Home yeah. Game. That's yeah. awesome. That's so great. 
thank you for sending that feedback towards us. That's great. Love that, love that, love that. Ah, they are still here. They did it for their own players in their Curse of Strahd game. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's why I did mine. <laughs> and they're actually right here on the, uh, on the DM cart. Just ready for any random encounter that might happen in Barovia. Right, so we've added that pink color to the wing. Um, again, and it is present in the um, in the uh, example, in the, uh, the artwork in the Monsters Manual. Um, I am going to go over, though. I'm going to go over that with... Uh, what do I want? I'm going to be careful with this, because I don't want it to be too heavy. Maybe a sepia wash. I hope I don't mess this up. Yeah, so I'm just doing a light. Now, you know what? That doesn't necessarily do what I want it to. It's just because it's washing out the detail a little bit. So we're just doing a really light glaze with a sepia wash there. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry brush it with some more silver. My uh, paper towel here is running out. I think I'm okay. Grab some silver here. Question from uh, Jut MFD: yeah. uh, Is there another step to black wash, or do you just let it dry? Just let it dry. Um, you will find that if you add it to a large area, you will get kind of that muddled sort of uh, appearance or mottled appearance, um, kind of spotty and like whatever. Uh, but once you dry brush over that wash afterwards, it will uh, kind of solve that issue. Uh, and you won't notice it as much. But you can see here, you know, I did that rosy flesh, and then I did another dry brush of silver over it. So you're still getting um, that silver hitting the highlights on and the texture on the wings like that. There. Okay. It's getting there. It's getting there. Slowly but surely. Looks pretty close to that. I think, I think it's pretty all right. It's getting there. Cool. I do like the contrast of the belly, actually, to the rest of it. I think that that turned out all right. Okay, so next we are going to use Electric Blue. And we are going to paint Electric Blue. It's a lighter blue in the game color line. And we are going to paint that into the mouth. Um, the idea here is that it looks like it's almost kind of glowing from the inside as if it might let out a gout of uh, cold breath or paralyzing breath. I guess that's the idea. I did hit the hit the teeth here. We're gonna have to touch that up after. But make sure you get the bottom and the top of the mouth. And we're basically covering the inside of the mouth with that electric blue um, color. And then once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add Glacier Blue in there right at the back so that it feels like that glowing sensation is coming from the back of its throat as if it's about to, to let loose. Then I'm going to take my Zero Brush and I am going to add Electric Blue onto the eyeball. Now here I'm coming in from the side here and I'm going to just paint the little eyeball on that side. And then I'm going to paint the eyeball on this side with electric blue like that. Let that dry and then we'll again pinpoint it with that glacier blue and that will be the eyes done. Just like that. Okay. While we're waiting for that, we might as well give the base a sepia wash. So we're going to use sepia here once again. We're just going to go ahead and just cover the whole base, slather it on the base, move it around. Make sure you try not to get it onto the clear effect kind of a flying stand. But we are just adding that wash. I'm actually going to do more than that. And that will complement and contrast against the silver of the dragon nicely instead of doing kind of like a gray rock color. 
birds are so peaceful. It makes me want spring. Oh, we're almost there. We are almost there. We are almost there. That's true. Okay. So that is good right there. Um, let's take a look at him. Um, I did want to do the claws a little something different. I don't know what, though. Um, let me think that over. In the in the subject matter, they're all in all the pictures I've seen of silver dragons. They're silver. They've got basically the same color claws and spikes as the rest of them. So I may leave it. I may not. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? So I'm just going to take a little black wash, and I am going to put a black wash on them. That will give them a little bit of a different tone, and it'll give them a little bit of shadow. I do like doing black claws on dragons. Um, especially kind of like the, the brighter color ones. The white dragon with black claws is really fierce looking. Um, but I'm just going to basically add this black wash to the claws and, um, and to all the spikes here on the wings. On its wing fingers. So that they're not quite black, but they're not quite just plain silver either. And that'll make them stand out a little bit. It's nice to have all this time that I can just like experiment and do fun stuff. So you're trying to cram in four horses in yeah, two uh, hours? Four elementals, six barbarians. Yeah, there's... I haven't made the best choices, folks, on this show. <laughs> challenge myself just kind of show people that you can get a lot done in a short amount of time um okay that is good uh the inside of the mouth is almost dry i'm gonna add a touch of blue wash if i still have some on the on the palette here i don't uh, touch a blue wa wash around the eye and inside the mouth uh, not too much, but basically just bringing some of that shadow back in because we want that to remain kind of in shadow a bit, like that. Uh, and then on this side as well. I don't want it right on the middle of the eye, but I do want it around it so that it looks like kind of a deep sunk wise eye here. And then also around the teeth. Like that. Fine looking dragon. There you go. And then we are going to take that glacier blue. Now, Rigor Raven, like to clarify, did you dry brush the entire mini with silver? Uh, yes. Yes, pretty much the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> After the blue and the wash. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then and then put the rosy flesh on, which I should have done before I dry brushed it, but then I just dry brushed over that again. Okay, Glacier Blue, we're just going to dot this eye here and hopefully give it kind of a, a little bit of a fun look there so that it really sticks out. Um, and then again, to the back of the throat here, I'm going to do some... That is as if, like I said, it looks like it's about to kind of let loose some cold breath. Raven says, I thought it looked too blue before. I thought. Too blue? Yes, it did. <laughs> it's true, it and that, that's before. what you will find uh, when you add a wash to it. But now it's very silver, I think. Um, I think that turned out all right. And the base is not dry yet, but we can kind of test fit it. There we go. That's how that will look. And then I'm going to just go ahead and dry brush the base again with that heavy brown. I'll probably, it's not on our list here, but I'll probably take some bone white or uh, some khaki and dry brush the top of that. Even pick out the little stones. You can do that with like a heavy blue gray and then add a black wash to that. If you want to add some more, you can add some grass tufts or static grass or whatever you want on there. 
But folks, that's a wrap on uh, the. It is six fifteen. <laughs> we are forty five <laughs> minutes early. See, this is what always have, used to happen. And I was like, yeah, you know what? We'll just like paint like six of them, and then, and then, yeah, um, hilarious. But uh, but that looks that that is that is all we want. Uh, you know what? I will go back and just. Um, Paint the teeth again because I did get blue on those teeth and I want to make sure that they stay silver. There we go. There we go. I mean, I do have some barbarians in the other room though. I didn't finish that one session that I could potentially finish if we wanted to. Um, but then again, for the VOD, I think it's also helpful to have a fully encompassed shorter tutorial. Just with all the steps that you need in order yeah, to... Wrong with showing that you can paint a yeah. whole dragon miniature in... Folks. Just over an hour. An hour and 15 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes for a whole dragon. Not to mention all the, the, the um, announcements that we had at the beginning. So that's yeah, so pretty... Really it probably was about an hour then. Probably about an hour, yeah. In one hour, we were able to get a pretty, you know, um, pretty solid dragon that looks a lot like it does in the Monster Manual for sure. Awesome. I think I am going to call it. Uh, I have lots of prep to do for tomorrow night's session. There's so um, much. So much to do. So much to do. Again, folks, uh, thank you so much. Join us next week. Uh, we do not have a miniature set up for next week, do we? Um, no, because it is the end of – it is March. Is it already March it next week? It is March next week. Wow. So being March next week, we will have a whole new schedule. Maybe we'll do the Gold Dragon. Maybe we'll do the Bahir. Maybe we'll do the Drider. I don't know. But we will release that schedule as soon as we can uh, to let you folks know. Again, Gary Khan, we will be there live. We are very excited about uh, painting uh, at Gary Khan with 40 of the folks that are able to register and all of that fun stuff. I do have one last minute question? Yes, please. Oh, you know what? We'll take some questions. Let's take some questions. questions. Yeah, sure. Um, before we, we hop off. Sure, here. sure. Um, but. Kayla Jane is dying to know. Yes. Um, how do you keep your dragon mini secure on the base? I have a young green dragon mini, and it always falls off. Yes. Glue it if you want. <laughs> I would absolutely take some crazy glue or super glue or whatever, um, put some in there, stick it on. It will never go anywhere um, if you want to keep it off the base uh, at any point in time. But uh, I don't know what, put, the, put the silver dragon in amongst in the, the trees. trees where it belongs. Um yeah, that's a great question. Are there any others that we want to... Um, just going to check here to see if there's any coming through. I'll do announcements <laughs> while you're... And if there are any others that come up, then we can we can divert. Uh, like I said, Gary Khan, we will be painting the young red dragon live for everyone at the... Uh, for, for the 40 people that are able to register for that event. It is $20. You get the dragon, and you get a class with myself and a celebrity and uh, some WizKids folks painting along with you. It'll be super fun. We're super excited about that. We will be painting this bad boy here, the young red dragon, uh, in all of its glory, which will be fun. And you'll be one of the first to actually get your hands on it um, because it is coming out in March. So that'll be uh, a blast as well. Uh, make sure that you check out the event list. Tomorrow night, Into the Mist, episode 8. Um, we have 13 episodes in this season. Um, we will shift potentially to something else for next season. Haven't announced it yet. Uh, and then come back to Into the Mist potentially the following season. It is all not final. This is all potential conjecture, as it were. But uh, we have been, had so much fun playing Curse of Strahd. Um, it is not the end, even if we divert, um, which we're just finalizing now, the potentiality of doing that. But anyways, join us tomorrow night, episode 8. Episode 13, we're, we're doing a live finale from Gary Khan that you can watch. And it's an interactive stream, which means that you guys can join us at the table um, and actually affect the combat in game. Not actually at the table. Not actually at the table. Virtually, you can from your home, <laughs> interact with the combat that happens. Thank you for the follow. Uh, interact with the combat that happens at the game. Yes. Uh, we have celebrities, including Nora Ibrahim from Have Dice Will upcoming uh, show, Have Dice Will Travel. She'll be at the table playing a big part, as well as a number of other celebrities I can't wait to tell you guys about, <laughs> but I can't yet uh, because we're just finalizing some things. 
So uh, join us again for that live on the D&D Twitch and on our Twitch on March 28th at 10 a.m. Central Time. It's not our usual time, um, but then, of course, you can watch it VOD after the fact as well. If you're interested in our adventure boxes, monthly campaign boxes, we send you a box a month. You can get $20 off your first box by putting I Want Adventure into uh, the checkout, and you will get $20 off. Cancel at any time. Try one box if you want. Pause your subscription. Continue it later. Whatever you want. Uh, it's just a lot of fun, and we enjoy it. Uh, make sure you follow the D&D Twitch. Make sure you follow the Realmsmith Twitch. If you do, before this ends, you'll light up this little potion bottle over here. Uh, and then subscribe on YouTube as well, because uh, all of our VOD episodes are there, and you'll get notified every time we go uh, either live on YouTube or we uh, post something new for you guys to check out, including all of our episodes of Into the Mist and all of our old live stream. Uh, we're missing some holes in our old live streams, and Julian is um, graciously uh, taking the time to actually recover some of those episodes from Facebook and put them onto our YouTube page. That'll be really awesome and fun as well. Um, and then also we're on Instagram and all the socials at slash TV. So that's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, Realmsmith TV. Thank you to Vallejo. Thank you to WizKids. Thank you to Sirenscape. And of course, the D&D for having us natively. Julian has one we have more. One last minute question. Yes, Flying absolutely in here. done. What comes in your first adventure box? Ha! ha! So much. Product so luck. much. Yeah, you know what? Because somebody asked, do you want to grab it? Um, I can. It's upstairs. Pardon on, my mic removal. The, yeah, uh, it's upstairs on the ground, and we can show everybody what comes in the first. Yeah, let's do that it. first box. Why don't we do that real quick? We have the time, folks. We do have the no time. No worries. We're not going anywhere. It's Sunday. I have nowhere to be. I am hungry, but we'll upstairs, take care of that later. With that. Upstairs, okay. upstairs. Yeah, it's in the blue in the blue Realmsmith box. Um. Yeah. So fun. Um, the. Modules in the box are written by Brandon, who plays on our live streams, um, and myself. Uh, Brandon does most of the actual writing of the modules themselves, and I do a lot of the story design and the world design along with Brandon. Um, and a lot of the content is curated and designed and created in-house, as well as some of the product partners that we also have uh, that help us along with all of the stuff that goes in this box. And again, you, cr you get number one of the box or the first part of the box, and then you get each additional box after that. Um, and it carries a campaign along six story, uh, six box story arcs, and then the next story arc continues the campaign, but is a uh, different um, kind of thing. Go. So here we go. This is our funky box. Um, this will be a DM screen inside once we are able to, unfortunately, because of the uh, uh, shipping issues that we're having out of China, we haven't been able to deliver. But you can see that there is actually a, um, there will be eventually a, oop, a folding punch out <laughs> DM screen inside our box, which is crazy. Uh, actually, all of it's not in here. I forgot that some of the stuff's upstairs. Um, if you want to just grab around the corner there, we've got all of our modules on the uh, on one of the desks in the studio there. Pardon uh, my mic removal again. No problem. So in the first box, you get the uh, Rusty Dragon uh, WizKids uh, bar set. You get the Dancing Girl and Bartender. You also get a bunch of uh, Reaper Minis for um, to fill out the Tavern staff. You get a massive chunk of paper craft. Um, and this is all papercraft terrain. This builds the entire Shattered Shield uh, in, or sorry, not the inn, the tavern that you need for the first box um, there. Then you also have what Julian is grabbing. Um, uh, so this is the inside, oh yeah, this is the inside of, of the partially built uh, DM screen. It's got a an initiative tracker with little punch-out initiative tabs that you put people's names on and go on top. It just fell in, but you didn't get the idea. also has a dice tower in the middle that connects there. Uh, and then you also get a uh, personalized letter. Not personalized, sorry, but a letter with a Realmsmith wax seal that gives you all of the contents of the box. You get a candle that smells like an encounter in the box. We have a sewer candle. We have a blazing hearth candle. We've got a... Uh, uh, Swamp Candle, uh, which is all very fun and people's spouses really love. Uh, this isn't the module for the first one, uh, but it is a mo uh, one of our modules. You get a 12-page module along with a full-color map 
that comes in that as well. Uh, as well as a Sirenscape sound set card that you can, that is specifically curated by Brandon, uh, even with our own sounds and our own voiceovers in it as well. So you get everything you need in the box in order to run it. Uh, you can get the first one, like I said, cancel any time, try it, pause your subscription, come back to it, and twenty dollars off your first box if you subscribe with I Want Adventure in the checkout process. Uh, you also get a mug, a wooden. Uh, Shattered Shield mug, which you can check out on our website, www.realmsmith.tv. <laughs> Go there, you'll see everything you get in it. As well, you can check out the Kickstarter that we ran uh, at, uh, if you go to Kickstarter on our webpage, or if you go to Kickstarter and look up Realmsmith, um, it, you can watch the videos about everything that's in the box and the way that we're improving the box business and doing a lot of fun, really fun stuff. Thanks for doing that, guys, and asking about that. It's close to our hearts, and we appreciate it. Absolutely. We're good? Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, youngest son loves dinosaurs. Any suggestions on how to paint a realistic looking T Rex from Nolan? Ha! Ha! Uh, we did a T Rex. You want to? I know you keep coming on and off. Uh, the T Rex is in the bottom I'm of the display leave case. I'm the mic off because yeah. I feel like you don't want me to talk anymore. Yeah. Uh, the T Rex is in the bottom of the display case in there. All right. uh, we did a T Rex at Origins last year. It's the WizKids T Rex. Actually, the T Rex comes in one of the adventure boxes. I think it's box number. Seven, maybe? Uh, six. Six, seven. Seven. First box of the second adventure. I'm not sure. You get one in there. But uh, I painted it the red sc color scheme that I've kind of seen uh, uh, kind of uh, circulating about. Um, and so you can find that on – you can find the T-Rex on – I think the, the – it's on either YouTube or Facebook. You can find the episode where we did this. Uh, I could probably show you here. Um, this is the color scheme. I didn't do the base yet, but this is the color scheme for the T-Rex, which we did at one of the shows, so you guys can check that out. All right, we're going to call it. Thank you so much, folks. You guys have a wonderful week. If you have any more questions, you can actually ask them tomorrow night into the mist. We are live, and we do have the uh, capability, and we often um, answer questions for all of you folks while we're live in the break. Um, and so... We'll see you tomorrow night. We will see you on Nolzers next week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the raid. That was incredible. Uh, and thank you to you all. You guys have a wonderful night. And we will see you in Barovia tomorrow night. Bye. Good night, everybody.